We're driving a 2020 Ram 1500 Rebel Crew Cab. I think that's all of it. Coming up, my lady Evie is going to drive this thing. But first, information explosion. So let's get things moving. Interior. So this is an F-150 competitor or a Chevy Silverado, GMC Sierra. They're all uh, in that same space. By size, this is uh, offering the same things that those would, which is that there's plenty of room in here. My daughter has ample space back there. I can do dumb maneuvers like this and <laughs> not accidentally hit my wife. Ram Ramble, flailers, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the style of the Ram? I think it is Sporty for sporty. a truck. Oh, okay. What's giving you those sporty vibes? Well, it's probably the logo and the materials they chose. What is this? Sort of a little cross hatchy thing? Yeah. It's like black plastic with flash. Yeah, it, it does have a sporty vibe. And some of that may have to do with the fact that we're driving the Rebel in particular, which has oh. a sort of a darkened aesthetic, whereas um, other Rams have a little bit more bright work. There's actually some very nice soft materials. The stitching elevates things a little bit. Of course, there's the uh, requisite hard plastic. But if I've one, learned one thing doing truck reviews, it's to never complain about hard plastics because the truck people will uh, point out how stupid I am. You want hard plastic? You've got hard plastic. I need to stop pointing at the camera. Hey, why, why are you getting, getting so aggressive? I know. They're just trying to watch a pickup truck review and here you are pointing and flailing at them. I think it's because we haven't had as much contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Evie would like to touch people. you. People. <laughs> As mentioned, this is the crew cab. If you get the quad cab, it loses about 9.6 inches of rear leg room, which wow. sounds like a lot, but there's so much back there to begin with. I feel like the quad cab would still meet our needs. Uh, generously. The crew cab also adds about $2,800 to the price tag. Ooh. So if you want to save an extra $2,800 for, let's just say, general provisions, <laughs> uh, then that might be a thing you could do. We're being topical without being aggressively topical. <laughs> Underneath the rear seats, you've got spaces you can uh, take advantage of. If you flip up the rear seat, I really like how there's like a little cargo hook. So like if you have groceries, you can uh, hook it on top there. Then if you peek in here, a ton of space. This is a large sliding section, very functional. There's a second glove box there. Uh, door storage is excellent. Oh, and there's a little spot right up here on the dash, which has um, a little outlet. Really nice spot to put your radar detector because <laughs> Who knows what kind of speed you're putting down in your big diesel pickup truck. <laughs> you think I'm joking? No, 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 I'm not stereotyping here, but every once in a while you come across a pickup truck driver that drives with some aggression. I'm just saying if you're motivated, you can put down some pretty sick speed in a big pickup truck. In all your peeking around, did you happen to notice any of the Easter eggs? I did not. If you're gonna make plastic, you may as well make it interesting plastic. One of the spots where there's interesting plastic is right up top here where you've oh. got math, trigonometric, 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 trigonometric ratios, the Pythagorean theorem, standard dimetric conversion stuff. Is it's this because they know we're going to have to homeschool our child? <laughs> I don't think that's what they were aiming for, but if it helps Handy. us with the homeschooling, then that's good too. And then look down here, what's that? Those that, are trucks. Those are not trucks, that's the progression of Ram pickup trucks. I just like those little fun details. It just makes the vehicle feel a little bit more special. Even though it's in every one of these. Yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> Good counterpoint, yeah. sweetie. <laughs> Do I get a special hat that says Captain Buzzkill? Uh, hey, you have to make the graphic. <laughs> How's your seat comfort? It's cushy, I like it. Yep, cushy over here as well. Let's check that lumbar support. More than adequate. Rear window test. Armrest test. My elbows are already in the correct position. I'm driving with my hands in an eight and four, which I think for this truck is the right move. A little bit of stitching here, but that doesn't impede my comfort. Uh, soft on the outside, that's like full marks, two elbows up. Wow. If I were to give it a grade, I'd have to take off marks for how high it is. Well, yeah, have you considered little... raising your seat? No. Okay. So, user error. No, 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 not user error. You're just merely being inquisitive in a yes. complaining way. How about family friendliness? Let me give you some information. Ooh. Five star overall crash rating. 
there are three different positions back there with latch points, so you could literally have three different child seats back there simultaneously. I like how exposed they are. They're very exposed. And then ingress, egress, our daughter has had no issues climbing in and out, partially facilitated by two options. One, $695 worth of side steps, and two, the uh, $1,800 air suspension that lowers the entire vehicle to make getting in and out easier. And you can actually control the air suspension with the remote. Oh, that's handy. That is kind of handy, yeah. What do you think? Is this truck family friendly? This truck is family friendly. <laughs> okay. Well, her heart wasn't in it, but I, th I appreciate you saying that, sweetie pie. What do we think? Family friendly? Definitely. Yes, very family friendly truck. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 50,000 subs, I'm gonna tell you a terrible dark secret about my hair <gasps> style. You know, we are not truck people, but we're slowly becoming truck people for how many we're driving. What do you think about the aesthetics of the Ram 1500 Rebel that we're driving? I really like it. It seems super stylish for a truck. Like, I like the shapeliness. I always point this out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Does it look like a lady? <laughs> no, it doesn't look like a lady. It Does it looks... look like a strapping dude? <laughs> yes, it looks like a strapping dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I get you, Iguana. <laughs> no, you get on in here, it's fine, you stay. <laughs> this one in particular is a little bit more my style. Instead of the chrome grill, it's got a darker grill. Uh, this is on the 33 inch tires. It's a little bit more rugged, it's got tow hooks because nothing says off-roading like tow hooks. Like a little bit darker, a little bit manlier. I also like the sport hood. Uh, looks, uh, yeah, you know, from my vantage point, it appears to be sporty. Very good. Oh, so that is not how they all look. I don't believe that's how they all look. Okay. I did think that was aggressively sporty for a truck. You were just overcome with its pure masculinity. I was. Overall, the Ram 1500 to me, especially in Rebel guys, is brawny like a towel. Maybe not as brawny as this uh, full-size semi next to us, but I bet we're a little bit faster off the line. Let's see if I can smoke him. And needless full throttle acceleration. Whee! Oh, take that, UPS. <laughs> Would you like to see what full-size semis we're smoking uh, in between YouTube videos? Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> what? <laughs> We need two iguanas in here for that one. <laughs> that wasn't a double iguana comment. <laughs> you had to make it dirty. I was just talking about trucks. <laughs> Mike and Truck Man Museo can't stop talking about trucks, and here you are making a joke out of it. Please follow us on Instagram. <laughs> See it smoke some more semi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in motion. <laughs> As we're going over this broken pavement, uh, do you notice anything? You're going to tell me anyway. That's true. Uh, ride quality in the Ram is quite good. So it's still a body on frame pickup truck as uh, are all full size pickup trucks, but this one has coil springs. And because of those coil springs, rather than having leaf springs, ride quality is very good. Oftentimes if you go over stuff like that, like those railroad tracks, you feel this residual bounce. I'm gonna let this uh, semi in. You know, in these crazy times, it's good to be neighborly. Right? Yes. If you want a pickup truck that's still quite capable, but also has um, a much more enjoyable ride quality, the Ram 1500 is a great choice. Let's see, uh, steering efforts. That feels pretty darn manageable to me. We'll see in a second how you feel. I think one of the things that you worry about when driving something this big is how manageable it is. And to me, this feels like a very manageable package. Mm. Would you like to manage it? <laughs> Sweetie, we'll that, that, that feels like a pretty good segue. Why don't you manage this package? <laughs> Yay! Yee. Here you are, managing the Ram. How's it feel? It feels much less intimidating than the last large truck I was in with the Super Duty. Well, now the Super Duty is a larger pickup truck. And yes. also, I would say that you might be adapting to driving pickup trucks because you're doing it more frequently. That could be as well. Man, for different sized drivers and pickup trucks, those power pedals are awesome. I would be much more intimidated by this without them. Do you want to, you want to take a turn? Ooh, I like the steering. It feels pretty natural. Like it doesn't feel like I have to muscle it. The entire experience feels pretty controllable. The brakes, the steering. Are you feeling more at ease in, in this truck than you might have uh, expected otherwise? Yeah. My lady's a ram lady. <laughs> it's not what it sounds like, Iguana. <laughs> and now when we're straight, needless full throttle acceleration. Ah. Go for it. Wee! 
Diesel G's. There you go. <laughs> I didn't feel the speed the way you might in a different vehicle. Does yeah. that make any sense? The power band for a diesel tends to be kind of immediate, uh, but then it doesn't really stretch up into those upper revs. So let's say it's a rainy day. You might kind of quickly spin the tires and then it sort of like runs out of steam fairly rapidly. Okay. That's just the way of the diesel, baby. All right, I feel like we've got enough out of this. You've dieseled all you need to. <laughs> uh, hey, that was a pretty fine job you did. You uh, managed that package just fine. <laughs> Overall, I find the Ram 1500 to be an agreeable driving package. Emotion factor. From the driver's seat, I feel uh, empowered and confident. The emotion factor is pretty strong, and I think that's matched by an aesthetic that feels uh, to you sporty, to me uh, brawny. There's the uh, towing power and the payload capacity to enable an active lifestyle for those of you that still have that. There's way more style than I was expecting from a large, capable truck. Yeah, we're feeling a positive emotion. If you're feeling a positive emotion about the Ram 1500, check the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description and go buy one of your own. Remarks! There are two bed lengths, five foot seven inch and six foot six inch lengths. The longer bed only comes on the shorter quad cab and then the crew cab, you can get either bed length. There is a lot of bed innovation. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a touchy subject because I know truck people sort of bristle at the notion of niceties. Why is that? You tell me audience, why do truck people bristle at the notion of conveniences and niceties in their pickup trucks? Uh, so the Ram box has these two container areas on either side and you can flip up, they're lockable. There's a good amount of storage space in there. Um, I can verify you can put a child in there, not while moving, but just for funsies while, while stationary. To me, that makes this a much more usable truck than a lot of pickup trucks for family duty. Let's say you wanna go get groceries, um, but the, the back of the cab is already full up and you don't want groceries like flying around in the bed. You've got a smaller yet secure spot that you can uh, put all that stuff. That's what I always wonder about with um using a truck as a family vehicle. Uh, for larger gear, there's a bed divider that you can place in different positions mm -hmm. so you can keep different size cargo from sliding around. And then this one also has the tonneau cover. The tonneau cover is a three-piece unit, costs $550, and it has these uh, <laughs> latches at the back that can lock it into place. I do know for a fact that if you are ignorant and you think that the thing is stuck, you can overpower those latches. Uh, oh no. I, I didn't mean to, but I did. So uh, <laughs> just know that it's not 100% secure. Our bed also has optional lights and optional sliding tie downs. This also has the spray in bed liner. But I think the most interesting thing is the tailgate. So Honda already had one that would flip down or also rotate out. I think this is a superior design. I'm sorry, truck people, <laughs> but it is damped. That'll make it easier to lift and it falls down with more grace. I can't apologize enough for how, how convenient and nice that is. You can also flip the doors out 60-40 split, and what that does is it lets you get closer to the bed. It makes it easier to load mm. things in. I like that it's split rather than long, too, because if you're in a parallel parking kind of situation... That's exactly that's... right. If you have narrow clearance behind you, that makes it much easier. If you look at GMC's Multi-Pro tailgate, it's got more functionality built into it. It's got this middle section that flips down and turns into a step, but that flip down step can also like whack into the top of a trailer hitch. Oh. This doesn't have that, but as a consequence, it's not quite as easy to get into the Ram. So uh, rejoice truck people, you'll still have to kind of leap into the thing if you want to climb into the bed. As mentioned, we're driving the three liter diesel. This engine costs $5,000. There's also a 3.6 liter V6 and a 5.7 liter V8 with both e-torque and non-e-torque mild hybrid abilities. So if you want slightly better fuel economy and you don't mind spending $200, it's kind of a, a no brainer. Yeah, sure, go, go for the e-torque. Somebody right now in the comments is probably typing like, but it's more complex and it might break and so I don't want it. You can do that too. I don't care. So reasons to buy the diesel. One, it can tow an awful lot. Not quite as much as the 5.7 liter, but if you want to tow, tow like more than 12,000 pounds, this is a uh, perfectly reasonable choice. That's a lot of, of weight. Yes, it is. The other one is fuel economy. Japers, look at those numbers. I did some math. 24 MPG is the combined rating. And then this particular truck also has the optional 33 gallon fuel tank. Oh. So 
This thing can cover 792 miles. That is a crazy amount of range for a pickup truck. Uh, one could imagine watching a post-apocalyptic movie where you needed to cover a lot of distance to get to some sort of safe space or something like that. And, uh, and the Ram Rebel with the diesel and the large uh, fuel tank might be a good option. To be clear, I'm not saying that we're uh, entering a post-apocalyptic hellscape, but a little extra range never hurts. Actual max tow numbers with that 5.7 liter are 12,700 pounds. Uh, it's 12,560 if you if you go with the diesel engine. So it's it's pretty darn close. And if you are going to tow, the $300 trailer brake controller makes a lot of sense. In the infotainment space, a 5-inch screen comes standard. 8.4 is optional, uh, but this is a 12-inch screen. I, it's almost too much real estate. <laughs> I do like how they divvy it up in ways that make sense. You have two discrete areas, and you can select what you want on the bottom area. I kind of wish that wasn't surrounded by black, glossy plastic, because then mm. it would make the screen itself a little bit more prominent. Uh, it doesn't seem to be smudging too, too badly. I can smudge it. Mm-hmm. Actually, yes, for shiny black plastic. <laughs> yeah, not, not so bad, right? Totally. I'm lucky enough to have been reviewing cars long enough that I remember when trucks were a lot stupider. What High does tech. that mean? <laughs> there, there was a time where like um, trucks only had ABS on the rear. It was a real second tier choice for technology. And now you can get really neat technology in your big pickup truck. And this is quite literally the centerpiece for that concept. Ooh, it says back cam. Can I push that right now? Back cam, push it. <laughs> hey. Wow, look at all the places we've been. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's important. To, you know, take a nice look back. Yeah, play the montage music, sweetie. Remember that time that that uh, Hyundai Sonata passed us? Wow, there it goes now. Aww. This particular Ram has the optional 19 speaker Harman Kardon audio system and man, it bumps. Okay, BPM. Now I can't afford to play this very long because of royalties, <laughs> but listen to this bump. With exclusive new DJ sets from Oh, well that's disappointing. <laughs> it was a promotional thing and yet it still bumped, it bumps. It, it really bumped. Yeah. A Ram also has the optional $895 safety and convenience package with lane keeping assist and full speed adaptive cruise control. We're just cruising along. There's a completely motionless pickup truck up there. Let's see how freaked out I get. <laughs> oh, already slowing down. Oh, that's quite the gap. Full disclosure, the other day I was trying it out when it rained and I had it on the narrow gap and it was a little bit later to slow down than I would have hoped. So mm. I increased that gap just a little bit. That felt nice. Have you seen how expensive this thing is? Oh my gosh, I could not believe how expensive it was. Reviewing trucks has really opened our eyes to how expensive a truck can be. So this one, as equipped, is $71,000. However, this thing has everything. So it is a lot of truck for a lot of money. I'll also say, oftentimes pickup trucks are incentivized in a way that cars are not. Oh. So even though that MSRP seems very high, there's a good chance, especially now, that you might be able to get a good deal on one. Are there any remarks that we've missed? If so, tell us in the comments section, synopsis. In synopsizing the Ram 1500, it is luxurious, filled with technology, but also very hardworking. To me, the Ram 1500 is a wheelbarrow if Apple made wheelbarrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like you're mocking me. <laughs> No, I like it. <laughs> oh, well, it's very clever. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to My Could Drive, please do. At 100,000 subs, I'm going to review a windowless white van. They do seem to follow me everywhere we go. If you'd like to see what we're driving or flying between YouTube videos, follow us over on Instagram. Please do. Mm -hmm. And I know it's ironic, but uh, I still commit to this uh, high five thing. <laughs> Oh no, really? <laughs> because we're doing it digitally, it's safe. We're in our little quarantine family space, so it's cool. Sweetie, high five. You wanna high five? You too. Now more than ever, come get your high five. Mm.